I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be my June wrap up. And in the month of June, I think this month is the best uh, reading month of the year so far for me. Not only in terms of quality, but also in terms of quantity. Before the month of June, I think within this year, I have about three or four, uh, four books that I rated five stars rating. But this month, I got three books. Three books I rated with five stars rating. So yeah, that's incredible. And not only that, the quantity, regarding the quantity, I think some of you know already that I'm struggling with reading more than five or six books per month. But this month, finally, I managed to read seven books. So yeah, and of course, the first book that I finished in the month of June is my favorite book of the year so far. It is The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. Yeah, this is the second book in the Dandelion Dynasty series. Uh, and although I really love The Grace of Kings, The Wall of Storms, succeed over the grace of kings in every possible way i think this is the best second book of a series that i've read since the words of radiance by brandon sanderson it feels like i've talked about the wall of storms uh since the month of june so many times at least four times i mean i talk about it in my june tbr now i'm talking about it in my june uh, wrap up i also did a review on it and then i included this one also on my best book of the year so far so within a month i've talked about this book in at least four videos and I also did another one in Library of a Viking collaboration video. So I'm going to keep this short, but I think this one is a mind-blowing masterpiece. And I already include a full Spotify review uh, of this book and also The Grace of Kings on this channel. So if you're uh, interested in finding out my thoughts about this book in more details, it is spoiler-free, by the way. The review will be spoiler-free. And yeah, you can check out the review. But obviously, considering that this is my uh, favorite book of the year so far, well, this will also be my favorite book of the month even though i'm having such a great reading month this one just stands above them all and the second book that i finished in the month of june it was the fall of never dark by philip c quenchwell this is uh, the fourth book in the echo saga series and this is the beginning of the second trilogy in that nine book series and similar to the wall of storms by ken liu i also included the fall of never dark in my list of favorite books of the year so far so this was in my number 10 spot and I really enjoyed this one. Even though I had my reservations about it, but somehow the new characters, uh, the new main characters of the series, the new generation of heroes made me empathize with them very quickly. And not only that, the returning characters of the series also is one of the best things about this book. It's also very clear from the prose that Philip C. Quintrell is an author that keeps getting better with each book, especially regarding his prose and storytelling quality. In the first trilogy, almost everything is centered around humans, elves, dwarves and also dragons well in the beginning of the second trilogy now we have orcs as well and even though these are something that's very common in classic fantasy and a lot of fantasy books but philip c quenchell has enough originality and distinctive uh, in his voice and characters to make this series stands out there is a lot of dragon riders there is a plot twist that i didn't expect and that plot twist definitely made me well Let's just say that it made me so intrigued to continue with this series even more now, especially because the authors continuously said to me that he started to feel confident about his writing and storytelling in Kingdom of Bones, the next one. Uh, is the fifth book in the series, which I'm going to read within this month, hopefully. So yeah, I definitely love The Fall of Never Dark, and I highly, highly recommend the Echo Saga if you still haven't started this series. I think this series is incredible, especially if you're a fan of classic fantasy with a modern narrative. And speaking of classic fantasy with a modern narrative, the, the next book that I read is in a similar tone to it. It is of darkness and light and this is the second book the second main novel in the bound and the broken series by ryan cahill and this one again is a step up above uh, the first book of blood and fire in every possible way it is honestly very surprising to see how much ryan cahill improved since the time uh, he released of blood and fire which is i think it was only about six months away from uh, this book being released or nine months either way it was very quick and his improvement in writing and everything is stunning it is incredible i really love of darkness and light i think this one is a sequel it is more epic it features more characters and just the first 60 pages and just the first 60 pages of darkness and light in my opinion is already better than the entirety of blood and fire <laughs> it's not even it's not even because the first book is not good it's not that it's just that this one is just better in every possible way and you can immediately tell from the first chapter 
that his writing, Ryan Cahill's writing, has improved so much. The battle scenes were really good, characters that I didn't enjoy reading about in the first book has become one of my favorite POV to read in this one, and more importantly, I think, uh, the new main POV character in this one, Dane Arteris, is my favorite character in the entire series so far. Even though he only appeared in this book for about 7 chapters, Dane stole my attention immediately from his first chapter and he never let go. I gave this one a 4.5 stars rating, but the next book that I finished is another book by Ryan Cahill, and it is The Exile. So this is uh, technically book number 2.5 on the Bound and the Broken series, but this one takes place before of Darkness and Light. So this one is about Dane Arteris, a character that I just talked about that appeared in Of Darkness and Light briefly and immediately become my favorite character in the series. So it makes me so happy to be reading a novella about him. But despite the fact that The Exile is a novella in the Bound and the Broken series, I think this one is the best installment of the entire series so far. In more or less 200 pages long, which is technically this is a short novel instead of a novella, Ryan Cahill was able to pack so many content into this novella. In Of Darkness and Light, Dane Arteris first chapter Chapter, introduce him with him returning to his homeland after 12 years of being exiled. But we as readers, if we're reading of Darkness and Light for the first time without reading the exile first, we didn't know what happened. We didn't know in details what happened to Dane in his past. We didn't know what exploit he did in the past 12 years. So the exile efficiently and effectively tells that background. But 12 years is a long time and if the author wanted it, I think he could have done an entire trilogy surrounding Dane Arteris. But Ryan Cahill didn't do that. He put the main point of Dane's life in this novella and I think it worked incredibly well. Not saying that I don't want any more of Dane's story though, so if you're watching this Ryan Cahill, I'm always up for more Dane's story. But in a way, I think The Exile is amazing. It is one of the best novella that I've read. And from reading of Darkness and Light and also The Exile, I cannot wait to read the third book of War and Ruin. I think the convergence will be incredible. And just like The Wall of Storms and The Exile, this is the third book I read within the month of June that I gave 5 stars rating and it is Locklands. Locklands by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the third book uh, in the Founders trilogy. It is the conclusion of the trilogy and I think this one is absolutely bonkers. It is utterly insane and honestly I didn't expect that the scope of the series would become something like this. I also put Locklands in my list of favorite books of the year so far. I think I put it at my number five spot. So it is in my top five ranking for the best books of the year so far and you know what, I think Robert Jackson better just prove once again why he is one of the best authors uh, for me. I know I keep on repeating myself about this, but by reading Locklands, so I have finished uh, two trilogies by him, the Divine Cities trilogy and also the Founder trilogy. Bennett proved that he is one of the best authors when it comes to blending sci-fi, fantasy and also horror into his series. And it always worked. It just did. This one is so inventive and although the beginning of the book takes place immediately 8 years after the end of the second book, Shortfall, and I know that this time jump won't click with many readers, I think it clicked for me because I think at the end of the day, Robert Jackson Bennett still center the main story of Locklands around the surviving main characters of this series. It is such a great book, the battle scenes were absolutely, again, bonkers and insane. I cannot say too much about this, but basically if you have watched Dragon Ball Z or have read uh, the manga series, well, imagine a battle like that and yeah, that's, that's what you get in this book. And more importantly, I think the ending of Locklands is satisfying. I definitely recommend the Founder Trilogy and also the Divine Series Trilogy if you still haven't read it. Seriously, I recommend anything by Robert Jackson Bennett now. I've read seven books by him and I love them all. Then the remaining two books that I finished in the month of June are Reread and the first one is Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. So yeah, this is, well, the conclusion to the first Miss Bourne Trilogy and obviously I love this one. There is no way I I don't love Hero of Ages. This is the book, this is the trilogy that makes me a fantasy reader. This is the third time I'm reading through the Hero of Ages and I'm still surprised how well written this book is. I mean, of course, the writing is not up to the standard of the Stormlight Archive, but you know what? I think the way Brandon Sanderson converged everything, the plotting, the world building, the mysteries, everything into this book is just mind-blowing. Starting from the first book, there is so much planning going on into the Mistborn trilogy, whether readers realize it or not, especially on your first read. Sanderson has carefully and meticulously 
plot and plan everything to make sure that the conclusion to the Miss Bond trilogy will be amazing. And I know this will be subjective, but for me, it works so well. Whether it's philosophy, character development, magic system, there is still so much to learn about the magic system, even if you know uh, in details about Alavancy and also Ferukami in the first and second book, there is still more in this one. Yes, I'm talking about hemallergy. So basically, the combination of Alamancy, Ferukami, and hemallergy is what makes the magic system in Miss Bond trilogy, or the Miss Bond saga really, the best magic system that I've read up to this day in fantasy. I talk about Miss Bond so many times, and even though I think the Stormlight Archive is still a better series compared to the Miss Bond trilogy, but this one, this trilogy, will remain as the most important trilogy that I've read in my life. So without a doubt, I highly recommend Miss Bond trilogy. I am doing a reread of this trilogy right now, well, of this entire series, this entire Miss Bond series, in preparation for the Lost Medal. So that's why I will be doing a second read for the first time uh, for the Alloy of War within this month. And finally, the last book that I finished in the month of June is Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan. So this is the first book in the Legends of the First Empire series. And just like uh, the first book in the Ryria Revelations, doing a second read through the Age of Myth is proving beneficial for me. Age of Myth takes place thousands of years before the events of the Ryria series. Although I don't think the main characters are as well loved as the Ryria characters, yet anyway, but I am definitely already intrigued by the female characters because I think Michael J. Sullivan writes some of the best female characters in fantasy, and this can be applied to this book as well. And the potential for the female characters in this series to shine can already be seen from this book, especially for Persephone and also Suri. I will have to read through the series more to find out whether Raid and Malcolm will be a character I love as dearly as the Vibria duo or not. But either way, I have done a full spoiler review of this book on my Goodreads and on my blog, so if you want to know more in details about my thoughts on this book, well, feel free to check it out. The links to the reviews of each book I mentioned in this video is included in the description down below. Also, this cover art by Mark Simonetti looks absolutely breathtaking. I think, look at this. This is a beautiful landscape. Mark Simonetti is one of my favorite cover artists, and I'm always glad to see that he's doing the cover art to the Legends of the First Empire, and also the third and fourth book of Ryria Chronicles. I gave The Age of Myth a 3.5 stars rating out of 5 on my first read, but on my second read, I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. So yeah, this is an improved reading experience, and although I didn't love this one as much as the first book in the Ryria Revelations yet, but if we're speaking only about the quality of the prose, I think the quality of the prose in Age of Myth is better than the first book in the Ryria Revelation series. As for the manga series that I finished in the month of June, I didn't finish a lot of them. I only finished one manhua series and it is called Legends of the Northern Blade. And I think this one is really great if you're into martial arts and slow burn story development and also character development. But the action in this one is so good. Seriously, if you love martial arts, you love sword fights, and you love reading webtoon, well, check this one out. So yeah, that's all the books that I finished in the month of June. Do let me know which one is your favorite books in the month of June and how many books did you finish uh, within that month. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me. It means a lot to me that you keep on supporting my hobby and passion even more.